You can try to claim anything you want, but if you go get it and it not be his will, be humble enough to know that it can be taken away from you. What's happening everybody? This your boy Jason Smith, Racing Jason for those who don't know. Back at you with another YouTube video. Still in quarantine, but I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. I've got a roof over my head, clothes on my back, food in the refrigerator. People will be calling me while I'm trying to record my YouTube video. You should have answered the phone the first time. So, before I was really interrupted, you know, this video is going to be about how people want to claim things when it comes to their faith. The quote is, name it and claim it. I wanted to look through and see what sacred scripture says about claiming things. Let's get started and let's get right into it. We're going to start at Job 3, 5. So Job chapter 3, verse 5. So Job is cursing the day of his birth. And verse 5 says, let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Let clouds dwell upon it. Let the darkness of the day terrify it. What's happening here is that Job is talking about not having been born and saying things that would make him feel in such a way the victim of things, which in a lot of ways he is. But at the same time, we have to understand that Job is still a man of God. When you have fellowship with the Lord, you put yourself in a position of vulnerability to all things that's why job here is feeling as though something came upon him which he's right but at the same time claiming of wanting to have something negative is not a good thing the main reason that i brought this verse up is because here is where it's quoted claiming we know that the lord is one to desire communion with his individuals. The Lord is not going to really commune with someone that is in a negative state and outside of a state of grace and respond to things that are on a negative end. Let gloom and deep darkness claim it. Okay. And then verse one, let's go back. It says, after this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, let the day perish wherein I was born and the night which said a man child is conceived let that day be darkness may God above not seek it nor light shine upon it now that's verses 1 through 4 see the thing about this is is that he's speaking negatively about the things that have happened now of course God is hearing this but the truth is is that we have to be very careful when we claim things because we can't curse these things being in communion with God He's going to hear that. So be careful what you claim. Because as we go deeper into this video, you'll understand why I'm explaining it. So let's go to let's go to James chapter 4. And we're going to start at verse 11 and go through verse 13. And it says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and get gain. Whereas... You do not know about tomorrow what is your life, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and we shall do this or that. That's the primary verse I want to focus on because it's simple to say that I'm going to do such and such or I want to do such and such. We have to know and understand that it's according to his will. It's according to his will. It's according to his will. We may desire things, but at the same time, it's important to understand that his will is going to be done. We may go off into life and do a lot of different things like I wanted to be this great real estate investor, have all of these properties, a big mansion, bunch of cars. It's just not happening. It's not happening. I tried to claim it. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some people that's going to succeed with that and claiming it are they in the good graces with the lord if he has a plan for your life i think what's going to happen is is that he's going to say look i need you to come with me there may be other people that have success in certain things and in certain ways but that doesn't necessarily mean that you follow that path i'm a subject of that with a lot of things that you say you just simply come behind it and say if it be his will i'm gonna go to the store i'll be back if it be his will it's honestly true like let's just be frank 
And I'm not trying to say that our own free will to do things. This is all in his plan. He's got the world in his hand. The Lord is so strong that we really, we have no idea. Another one of my favorite verses, back to Job, chapter 26, verse 7, it says, He stretched out the north over the void and hangs the earth upon nothing. That's how strong the Lord is. That's how strong the God the Father is. He hung the earth on nothing. There's nothing holding it up. So that means that with that type of power, you can try to claim anything you want. But if you go get it and it not be his will, be humble enough to know that it can be taken away from you. So let's continue on because just because you can claim something and go get it uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it's for you. And yes, you should say if it be his will, that's one aspect of it. But the communion aspect is asking the Lord. So let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. And Jesus spoke. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. These are things that has to do with coming to the Lord. When you're in communion with the Lord, you get the opportunity to experience what the Father really wants. And then it continues on in verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Now, that means the door is going to be open, and the relationship is going to be open, and you're going to have opportunity to commune with the Lord. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get exactly what it is you want. That relationship with God is really, really important. Because if you don't get what you want, it may be something else that the Lord is going to give you. Let's go to John 10.10, 10, another one of my favorite verses. So let's go to John 10.10 10, and it says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it in abundance. Jesus came for that purpose, so he wants us to have things. But we have to come to him. Going with what the world says and the, what the world thinks and the way that the world has things laid out, we can find ourselves in communion with the enemy. And you don't want that. I think that it's important to know and understand that asking the Lord is part of it, but being in communion with him is also part of it. So just naming something and claiming it is something that, you know, anything can drop in your mind. We have things that we want, things that we desire, but if the Lord wants it, we'll have it. And if you ask, continue to ask about the parable of the widow and the unrighteous judge. Luke chapter 18, 1 through eight. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Never lose heart while you're praying, while you're asking for something. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, vindicate me against my adversary. For a while, he refused. But afterward, he said to himself, though I neither fear God nor nor regard man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will vindicate her, or she will wear me out by her continual coming. And the Lord said, hear what the righteous judge says, and will not God vindicate his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will vindicate them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on earth. This is being in communion with the Lord. This is not naming and claiming. You can pray tirelessly for something. It's like a kid that wants something. Daddy, daddy, daddy. If they bug you enough, it's possible that you're going to give it to them. Just because it's like, if they don't quit bugging me, man, sometimes the only way out is to give it to them. So I think that's another aspect of saying, commune with the Lord, be one with him, and you'll get it. One more. I'm going to give you one more. So the last one is Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 2. This is another favorite of mine. Habakkuk is a minor prophet and, again, in communion with the Lord. So this is different than claiming something. In communion with the Lord, the Lord answered me. Write the vision. Make it plain upon tablet, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its time. It hastened to the end it will not lie if it seems slow wait for it it will surely come it will not delay now that's Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 and the reason that I, I, I read that because you know I was actually in when I was in, in therapy my therapist told me that I should write out a plan and she told me to go to this verse in order to do so you know because I have a lot of thoughts a lot of dreams um, a lot of aspirations but in communion with the Lord, some of that stuff just goes away, man. You know, a lot of that stuff just goes away. And even if you, it's something that you do want, it's okay. You know, like, 
I still want nice cars. I still want a nice house. But I'm okay with where I am, you know? In writing these things down, I asked the Lord, hey, this is what I want, but I'm gonna keep coming to you and telling you, these are the things that you put on my heart. If you don't want it for me, then help me understand why it keeps coming. If not, let's do away with it. That's why I am in my faith right now. Like, let's do away with the fancy cars. I'm not worried about that right now. It's still on my vision board, but at the same time, it's like, no, I'm not praying for that. Not right now. This is a productive way to understand. And I'm not saying that, that, that the people that use the term claim it are absolutely wrong. There's a difference between putting something out there and just going to get it as opposed to having meditated on it, prayed about it, and having an experience with the Lord to say, look, this is not going away. Lord, why do you keep giving me this? Because these things are not set on my heart by my own desire. People have worldly desires. And a lot of those desires come from what they see on social media, the things that happen on TV. And the truth is, is that those are the things that are distracting, distracting from doing the will of God. I just wanted to say that, and I hope you got something out of this video. Please like and subscribe and take care. God bless. Peace.